today we are gonna think outside the box a little bit and I'm gonna show you a creative way to reuse an old round tabletop. Are you ready? Let's do this. Last year I made a couple of giant clocks out of old tabletops and they were really popular and super fun to make. So I thought it would be fun to do that for you here today in this video. So what we've got here is a big old tabletop and it's actually a lot easier to find a tabletop than it would be to go buy a big clock, a lot less expensive. It's so if you have any interest in putting a giant clock on your wall, this is a much more economical option. This tabletop, I believe, came from either Goodwill or the side of the road. And you've seen those tables on the side of the road in the trash or at yard sales, little two top tables. People don't know what to do with them anymore. So this is a fun way to reuse them. So that's what I've got here today. Um, I also bought, and I will put links to the supplies below where I found them, but I bought a set of Roman numerals that are metal. Uh, they are kind of a rusty finish, which I really like. And then I got some clock hands and a clock mechanism that also has the rusty finish. I'll put the link to where I found this as well. So we are going to put this all together and make a really cool clock for the wall. First things first, we're gonna grab some paint and give this a little bit of extra character. So let me do that and we will get started. A project like this is fun because you can really do it any way you want. You can make this clock any combination of colors, a stain, the world is your oyster. I had a can of Dixie Bell's Driftwood sitting around and I thought that this would be a perfect color for the background of this clock. It will allow the rusty metal numbers and hands to really stand out and it'll be a really neutral finish for this clock as well. So I'm gonna kind of dry brush it, kind of get on just a layer of paint. Again, this is completely up to you. Uh, and you will notice too, this table has a lip around it. It's up to you. You can take it off. Uh, just usually a couple screws on the back. I'm going to leave it on though, because I think that this would be really cool for the clock to have some dimension and when it's hung to stick off of the wall a little bit. Okay, the front of this is all dry, so we need to start installing our clock movement. Now, when you buy a clock arm, you get something that looks like this. Um, and what we're, what we're gonna do is actually take it apart. So we don't need this, even though it's all painted, it's gonna match the hands, we don't need this. So you take off the back, and then we're going to unscrew all of these little pieces, and don't do what I just did and drop it on the floor. They're tiny pieces, so keep them all together. And we're gonna take off this cap, and this is what we'll be left with. Now, here's a little bit of a tricky part. This shaft here needs to be longer than the thickness of your table. So you do need to make sure if you can order an extra long shaft for your clock arms, definitely do so. Sometimes we have to carve out a little bit of the wood so that this sits in there and this is sticking up for our clock hands to sit on so they can turn um, and clear everything on the, the front of the face of the clock. So we do need to make sure this one looks okay, I think. We'll kind of test it as we go. So we've got this all taken apart. We're gonna set our pieces aside for now. I'm gonna flip my tabletop over and we'll find the center so we can drill a hole. And then we are just gonna drill a hole straight down through the center not quite long enough. So what I'm gonna do is trace around the outside of the mechanism. I'm gonna draw a couple of holes in the corners to get us started, not all the way through. We are just gonna use a chisel and a hammer to carve out a little section of this. Now, it doesn't have to be pretty and it really won't be. If this is the back of the clock that no one will ever see, all you do is just keep working it, keep testing to see if you've got a deep enough 
section for it to fit into. Let's see how we did here. Now that we've got that all finished, what we get to do next is glue on our numbers. And this is gonna be upside down for you, but I'm afraid if I don't do it the right way for me, I'll never get this right. So now, I think it's really fun to use these Roman numerals. They are rusty metal, and I just think they add a ton of character. I use E6000 to glue this on, and what we're gonna do is just glue it on. Make sure you get your numbers right. I mixed up my numbers once when I did this, which was so silly. Glue it on really properly, really well. Get a lot of glue is what I'm trying to say. And then we're gonna put some weights on each number and let it sit. And I kinda let it sit overnight. We'll probably walk away from this, come back tomorrow, make sure everything is stuck on there, and then we'll install our hands. I just tried to make sure that all the numbers are lined up so it looks really nice. When this is hanging on the wall, you're gonna be able to sit there and stare at it and we wanna be sure that our numbers look really good. So I think I'm in good shape here. I think I got all my numbers correct, double check. You can still move this glue here for a little bit. In worst case scenario, you can pry a number off, switch it around if you need to. I'm gonna get some jars of paint to put on top of each one of these to hold them down and let them dry and then we'll be back to reinstall our hands and finish this project up. Okay, I let the glue dry overnight, so let's take off our weights. All right, perfect. Now, I am going to go ahead and install our clock hands, put this all together. And there we go. Um, the rusted numbers do have a tendency to rub off a little bit, so I do just need to dust this. Um, but let me show you what this looks like. Just like that, we have a giant clock. What do you think? I love how much character this has. I think it would look fantastic on a wall, as part of a gallery wall, um, just about anywhere. Now these do have a good bit of weight to them, so be sure to hang them properly. What I am going to install on the back of this one, let me show you. One of these cleat hangers, um, also called hangman. I'll put a link down in the bottom for you. Um, but it comes in two pieces. You attach one piece to the wall, one piece to the back of something heavy like this, and then it slides together and sits together like this on your wall. Um, so these are really handy. They're easy to install, easy to use, and they can carry a lot of weight. So I'll install this on the back so it is ready to hang. And we have ourselves a giant fun clock. So I hope you love that tutorial. I hope it inspires you to think outside the box to try something new for your home and maybe make something a little bit more creative today. So hope you all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing for more projects coming your way soon. We'll see you later. Bye.